welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, your host, and broadcasting live from Los Angeles on this auspicious day, the day before Thanksgiving in the United States. And the topic of uh, today is going to be about gratefulness, um, being appreciative of life and grateful for everything that we have. As usual, um, we're going to start with a meditation. For those of you who is the first time with me, um, we have to uh, mute everybody because there's a lot of background noise and it disturbs our webinar. However, we're going to do our meditation and after our meditation, uh, you can either write on a chat box or simply raise your hand and wave at me or unmute yourself and then uh, we can talk about your question. So for the moment, let's take a deep breath and hang out in this moment together. Just simply being here without any ideas, any agendas, and let's appreciate being together, each other, ourselves, our family, our friends, and everything that we have. Let's concentrate on what we have and not what we don't have and be grateful for that. Let's, in this moment, simply love ourselves unconditionally away from our judgments, self-judgment. If you can put your self-judgment away and whatever that is and in this moment hang out with your being, hang out with yourself and appreciate the presence, appreciate yourself, appreciate this moment, appreciate the fact that you have intelligence and you're evolved to the degree that you recognize the beauty of this moment that this moment is very unique it only happens one time And we're all alive, we're here, we're well, and we have the ability to love, to give love, and to receive love. And that's a very, very amazing quality to have, beyond anything else. So take a deep breath. Close your eyes, bring your attention inwards to your heart chakra, and be, great, be grateful, dive into the gratefulness, and dive into the love that you experience and you feel for yourself and your for your family and friends and all beings in universe it's a few moments of gratitude to be grateful
And if you please repeat after me. And when you say this, just be sincere about what you're saying and do your best to really mean it, mean it and take it in. So if you please repeat after me, I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 As you're just hanging out in this moment at the company of the Holy Self, <coughs> just know that at any moment you disengage from your mind in the absence of your thoughts. You are in complete oneness with existence. You are always in oneness. But in the absence of your mind, you experience the presence. you experience the presence of the Great One, of our beloved Majesty, 
the Supreme Soul, the Supreme Being. The love of God, the love of the Spirit, How lucky we are to have the love of the Great One in our hearts. And to be able to feel it, live it, and transmit it. As you're just hanging out in this space, be aware that this silence, this peace, this love that you feel, it really comes from your own divine being. This is your own self. You're relaxing into your own being. You're allowing your own self, the love of the Great One, to shine through. This love comes from your own heart. You are the source of it.
just simply stay in this place of gratitude. Slowly, slowly come back. Slowly, slowly come back here. It's like we dissolve into the expansion and we come back to more focused to being an individual. When you do this work and you learn the, the pathway of being in love, being in meditation, being quiet, what happens is a lot, of, a lot of you experience this on a regular basis, especially when we've been together. And I've seen it happen to you. So it's my experience myself that has happened to me and it's the experience that I visually see that I've observed from what happens that when I'm sitting with, uh, with you and what happens is I've, for myself, this is what I noticed that as if this is who I am with all my emotions and my ideas of life and my mind. And this is the shell. This is an idea of what I have of myself. And in, when you go in deep meditation, then you're kind of separating yourself and you're, ki you're going into an expansion. You're expanding. You're getting bigger from an individual entity who's very much focused on emotions and your story, or whatever your story is, you disconnect from your story. And you kind of let go of your emotional story, whatever is going on, or your thoughts, or your ideas of life, past or future, you disconnect from it. And in that disconnection, you dissolve into space. You expand. Your consciousness begins to open up into expansion. And subsequently, you begin to feel the presence, the presence of yourself. And you begin to experience the bliss, the love, which is here which is only a few inches away from you, all you have to do is pull back, kind of sit back from being really into life and the story of life to disconnect from the story of life and kind of pull back, pull away from it for a moment. 
And in that very moment, all of a sudden, expansion takes place, love comes in, and gratitude takes over. And we become grateful. Gratefulness. Being grateful for everything we have. And we are culturally in a situation that we're constantly bombarded by fear, worry, anxiety. Uh, we turn on the TV, you watch the news, it's focused on a lot of negative stuff. It's always focusing on neg negativity. And they just bring worry and anxiety in us. But if you disconnect from that for a moment and just kind of pay attention to this moment right now, and you don't have to be philosophical, you don't have to be on a spiritual path. There's nothing to fear about this. You don't have to give up your faith or your religious practice or your family or your spiritual group. You don't have to give these things up in order to just simply take a moment for yourself and just look at whatever you have. Pay attention to what you have in this moment. Put your focus on everything that you have and disregard the things you don't have. And you can just go through different sections of your life and you will be amazed how much you have. You will be really amazed from anything. Go in your closet and open the closet and see how many jackets you have, how many, how many dresses, how many shirts, sweaters, stuff that you have. Look at how many pair of shoes you have, how many yoga pants you have. And look around, like at your apartment, your house. If you own a house, far out, you own a house. And if you have an apartment, look at whatever you have in there. If you have a car, if you have a job, if you make money. Your family, your friends. your pets. Just pay attention to what you have. And take a moment for something you have right now and use your imagination that in this moment if you don't have this, okay, like let's say I have two hands, two eyes, my body, two legs, I wake up in the morning, everything's functioning. Yeah, there could be pains and aches for whatever reason. Poor health, poor diet, poor not exercising or sleeping bad or old age or sickness or whatever. They happen to everybody. You're not the only one who gets sick. You're not the only one who gets old. It's not like existing single point pointed you and picked you up and making you oil old when everybody else is not aging or you're the only one who gets wrinkles on your face or you're the only one who gets arthritis or whatever. It happens to a lot of people. But what about the stuff you have? What about everything you have? What about when your body functions? 
So let's say, imagine that you lost one of your arms in comparison to right now that you have both arms. Can you imagine that? Can you, what, what is like life going to be like if that happens to you? Or you lose your eyesight, or you can't hear anymore, or you lose your, you can't taste things because you had an accident and you got a bit of a brain damage and now you're not tasting something. You know, the simple things, everyday stuff that we don't pay attention until we lose it. We lose something, a part of our body doesn't function anymore, or all of a sudden something has happened to your back and you're having a lot of back aches or neck pains or shoulder pain and now it's constant and it's every day and not, no one can help you. So and then you, you notice that, oh my God, it was so amazing, I'm so grateful for the time that my body was good working. So why not be grateful right now to it when everything is fine or semi-okay or to whatever degree it is being grateful for what you have. And then, you know, look around you with your, if you have whatever, family, friends, even if you have one friend on the planet, it's still much better than no friend. It's better than just being completely lonely and not have anyone. Being grateful for our friends. Being grateful for family, if you're connected to your family. And even though if your mom is bugging you, your dad is bugging you, your kids are bugging you, whatever it is, but you have them and you, you can communicate with them, and you can love them, and they love you. So you can give and receive love. And then a lot of us, most of us, live, or at least most of my participants that I'm in contact with, uh, they live in Western world, or they're living in countries that there is freedom, there's democracy, uh, we're not at war, we don't have any bombs falling, rockets falling on our heads. Um, a lot of things that we, you know, we go to the supermarket and there is everything. You can buy anything you want, you don't have to be, wait in long lines. Especially living here in Los Angeles, I mean everything is there in abundance. Abundance of everything. And then we have a tendency to focus on things that maybe we don't have or something should be different than how it is and then complain about it and really get focused on it and, not a, and missing out on the moment of this moment of life which is juicy, it's, it's amazing. It's, and when I say the moments of life are juicy and amazing, I'm not just referring that a superficial situation like, wow, oh, I love it and I'm so happy. No, I mean, there are moments of life that something happens and it upsets you or you're, you're unhappy or something doesn't go your way and there's tension or there's struggle. Why not appreciate that too? Being grateful for a moment or a period that you're struggling. Being even grateful for that because it gives you an opportunity to get stronger and transcend a situation which is unfavorable to make you stronger, to move on into another level and have that experience in your back and look back and look at it and say, yeah, that was a tough time, 
but I made it through. And being grateful for that. Otherwise, life is so boring. If everything is peaches and cream from the morning, from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, that's going to be too soft, too much of a soft life. And eventually we just forget and won't be grateful anymore for what we have. So sometimes it's necessarily for us to lose something or to be ill, to be grateful of our health and wellness or to have to struggle financially or emotionally or in love or whatever, whatever is the situation. It's not a bad thing. It's how you look at it. It's your perspective. It's your attitude that is going to put you in a place that you are suffering or put you in a place that you're joyful and you're really grateful of life. I saw during the US presidency election like how some people were so invested and so focused on negatives or even now during the COVID crisis of how people are focused on the negative. I see it with people around me, family members, some friends, that they're just focused on, oh, you know, I just hear stuff like, oh, this sucks and that sucks and uh, this country and da 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 da. And it's just the attention, it doesn't matter where you are, you can be in the worst country in the world. Or you can be in the best country in the world. And then it, your, if your attention is on the negative, then everything is negative. Even a beautiful sunny day is, is too beautiful of a sunny day and it's not good. And you can be in the worst country in the world and if you really, your attention is on the presence and the recognition of what is in this moment of the vastness of what's available to you, then all of a sudden your the country is becomes irrelevant. It's your experience in this moment of expansion of the true love. And I'll share this with you, even if you have one more day to live, even if you have cancer, let's say you have a, uh, you're terminally ill and, and you're only going to live three more, three more months and you're in pain. You still have that ability to be grateful and to find beauty and love and the expansion and the presence of the being even in that situation and tap into that level of consciousness. You have that ability to do it. It's just perspective. It's how you look at something. Where do you want to put your attention on? Do you want to put your attention on this is wrong with my son, that's wrong with my partner, and this is that da, 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 with my daughter or my family, and they do this and they do that, and I always have to look after them or clean after them. So now you're the victim, and you're not being treated fairly, and everything's against you. Or you can just shift that perspective and bring some meditation in your life. Learn to be quiet and learn to tap into what is available to you, the presence, which is the presence, the love. 
the power of the love, the power of the being, the vastness of consciousness of God, this moment, the vastness of it. It's so vast. It's overwhelming of its beauty, of its love, which is in this moment. And we keep missing it. This is like I just like wow how did I miss this in the past which is so simple it's just so unbelievably simple and it's here and it's free and you don't have to do anything for it. It's literally given to you. And I'm, and we miss it. We just miss it. We keep missing it. And life keeps renewing itself. So you have the next moment and next moment and next moment. But we're so screwed up. So brainwashed, so living, you know, in la la land, is just like so sleepy, so drugged up, so drugged. Culturally, through internet, through prescription medications, alcohol, sugar, food, and drama, and TV, and the drama movies. And more than anything, so much, so hypnotized to be so invested in our emotional process. Oh my God. I mean, I just, this is just like, drives me crazy of seeing a human race that is so stuck in so many different levels, even in spiritual level, with a lot of spiritual seekers, so stuck, so much invested in this emotional stuff of this happened to me and that happened to me and da 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 in this story, this story that is just not even real or doesn't even exist, that we're so attached to it, so involved with it, so heavily invested into this past story that we have, that we can't let go of it for a moment. And then when we sit together in meditation, because the power of presence is so strong that it happens, I can see it happens to you, and you disconnect from it, and you just like, whew, fall back. And you fall back to what? You fall back to the presence. You fall back into now. This is what happens. Because <laughs> I am not doing anything to you or I'm not giving you anything that you don't have. Because it's impossible. I can't give you something that you already have. And I can't do something to you that it's your natural inheritance, but it's easy, I can see, for you to project it on me that I'm doing it. No, all I'm doing is simply living in this moment, hanging out in the presence and disconnecting from my story, my emotional story. And the moment you do that, you are the vastness. Because you, you go beyond the mind and you tap, you come to timelessness. You come out of time and you enter into formless, timeless presence, which is here. And it's bliss and it's love. 
And it's so vast that you cannot deny it. And it's only, let's say, this much far away. All you have to do is just pull back. Leave your story here and just pull back. That's all you need to do. And instantly you get a glimpse of enlightenment. You get a glimpse of awakening. Because you are by nature awakened. You are by nature one. You have never been separated. It's impossible for you to be separated no matter what you do. Even if you go kill 50 people, you are still a part of Source, God. The rest of it is an illusion. Your sufferings, your struggles, they do happen, challenges in our lives and the struggles, but they don't have to suffer. The suffering happens because of a perspective we have. Because you hear a voice in your mind telling you things should be differently. It's not fair. Our world leaders should act differently. The government should act differently. The city should be different. The weather should be different. Economy should be different. People should be different. The system must change. Your family should be different. The school system should be different. Your kids should treat you differently. Your boss should treat you differently. You're missing out the point completely. It is a perspective. It's an idea. If you disconnect from that and fall back into yourself, instantly recognize the vastness of yourself. Instantly recognize there is no separation. It's impossible to be separated. It just doesn't exist. It's not even an option to be separated because it doesn't exist. It's purely illusion, illusory. You have to be drugged out and hypnotized to believe there is such a thing as separation and such a thing as disservice to you by God. We have so much to be grateful for. So much. Beyond our imagination. We have so much to be grateful for. Every day. As long as you're alive. As long as you're breathing. As long as your heart is pumping and the blood is running through you. And your mind's still working. In whatever level you are, whatever is happening in your life, if you change your perspective, you will see for yourself that A, everything is perfectly designed the way it is by the Creator, by the intelligence. B, is you have everything to be grateful for. And I'm not talking about blind faith, and I'm not talking about superficial gratefulness. I'm not talking about hypnotizing myself to be grateful. I'm just talking about simply, for one moment, have the willingness to give up your story, whatever is your story, just pay attention to it. Let's see what your mind says. It's like a little spoiled kid. It goes like, but this happened to me and that happened to me. Your mind will tell you this. I don't care who you are. 
because I work with people from age 25, 30 to 85. And the child comes and complains of this has happened to me, that has happened to me. If you can separate yourself from that little spoiled kid who's nagging all the time, if you can separate, I'm not saying things did not happen to your life. I had a lot of things happen to my life. And I understand for some people it's very difficult because there's so much investment into this story. But if you can just step away from it for a moment or for a few moments, you will get a very good glimpse of who you are. And you will get a very good glimpse of the vastness and the love that is here right now and it's coming from yourself. It's available for you all the time. You can swim to in it, you can drink it, you can bathe in it literally every moment of your life because it's here. It's here. And it's coming from yourself. It's you. It's around you. It's surrounding you. It dances around you. It plays with you. It kisses you. It touches you. It's here all the time. All you have to do is step away from your story. And be grateful. Shift your awareness. Shift your awareness, shift your attention, shift your perspective. Take your attention from the negative. I'm not talking about positive visualization, positive thinking. I'm not talking about that. Oh, okay, Zarathustra said at the webinar that we should think positive and we should visualize things positively. No. What I'm saying is, yeah, it's great to think positive versus negative, but positive thinking and negative thinking are the same shit. It's thinking. You're still keeping your mind activated. And an activated mind creates all kinds of desires. Once this, once that, want to be here, want to be there, blah, blah, blah. It's restless. It can't relax. That's what mind is. It's restless. There's no such a thing as a friendly mind unless you're using your working mind or unless you become the master of the mind and be the observer of it. But what I'm referring to right now is simply you shift your perspective of how you look at things. Look at your partner or your mother or your child of how you're viewing them, walk away, subjectively look at it as if someone's never seen your, you never seen your son or your daughter, your kid or mom or dad or whomever ever before. Walk away from it and shift your place and look at them from a different angle. And look at the, the stuff, the positive things of whatever aspects of your life, bring your attention to that rather than getting being hypnotized by the media and your surrounding and the movies to put your attention all the time on negative stuff, Armageddon, the world is going to end and you're going to be a robot or you're going to become an AI or you're going to be ex human race is going to be ex you know is going to end whatever it is what's going to happen to my country what's going to happen to the planet what's going to happen to human race blah 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 and then you're just missing out constantly. 
You've been missing out life for past 50, 60 years. You have no idea you're missing it. You don't know what you're missing. Number one. When Papaji came to my life, the merciful guru, the grace came to my life. The master came and shook me up to wake me up. It wasn't about me becoming a disciple of him to follow him. It wasn't about my master is better than your master and this spiritual path is better than yours and look at me, I look more holy and I'm more evolved than you and da 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 da. I realized it was about waking up to the truth of right now, to the presence, this moment. Whether I'm backpacker, I was a backpacker. I only could survive. I only could spend five hundred dollars a month. That's all I could do. It wasn't about what I had, how much money I have, if I can travel or I can have this cool motorcycle, so I can put this girl behind me and I'm a cool dude or whatever. I realized it was about this moment, this pr present moment with everything you have and everything and just be grateful for what you have right now and dive into the place because it has nothing to do with physical stuff. It doesn't matter what nationality you are from, what race you have, how much money you got, what did your dad do, what is your past history, your family ancestry, da 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 da. You've been disserviced, you're a mom of three, you've been divorced, your husband beat you up, your mom was alcoholic, it's not any of these things. Here, the present, mom present moment doesn't give a shit about what has happened it's available to you right now you're the one who's not available to it because you're too stuck into your story you're the one who's mi missing it the present moment is here all the time the vastness is here all the time you're the one who's thirsty dying from thirst and here's the well and you're not drinking from it because you're too stuck up in your butt thinking about your story. Too invested in that story. You're missing out. Too much invested in your story that you're missing out this moment and you're not grateful for it. All you have to do is stop or go watch some news from Ethiopia, from other countries, and see what is happening. Watch some footages of these disaster areas or war zones and stuff like that and see what these people are doing, how they're living their lives. And then just come back to this moment and see how much you have. And just be grateful for what you have. Because you have a lot. We all have a lot. In the physical world, material world, and family and friends, we have a lot. And then, on top of that, if you disengage from your story, then you realize you even have something beyond anything else. The present moment. The vastness of this moment. The <laughs> Oh my God, this is too good. I'm so glad we talk about this. 
come and join me here in this moment. Come and hang out with me. Let's play together. Let's share this together. Let us all realize and recognize the love and the vastness of the being that we are. And all is well. So, happy Thanksgiving to all of you, all over the world. It's the day of giving thanks, being grateful. I'm glad we should have more days like this. More days dedicated to being grateful. Being grateful for everything we have. Anybody has any questions, any comments? And those of you who are with me on Facebook and Instagram, I am very grateful you're with me, but I can't really respond to your question. It's too many devices for me to, to deal with. So if you want to connect with me, have a dialogue, I encourage you to come and join me uh, through my website at zaratustra.tv and come and sign up under the Academy, 5D Academy. And then through our system Zoom, the platform Zoom, then we can connect with each other. And I can answer your questions. Okay, so good, we're time-wise. We're doing pretty good. No questions? No comments. Hi, Candice. Welcome back. I'm glad you're feeling good. I am. I am feeling good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm glad to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Busy making making pies today. Oh yeah. Yeah. What kind of pies are you making? Um, apple. Okay, I like apple pie. <laughs> You're going to heat it up la later on with some ice cream? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if there is any more room after the turkey. <laughs> right. <laughs> cool. Hi, Iman. Nice having you with us. Welcome back. Thank you. It's yeah, lovely to be yeah, here. yeah, yeah. And hi, Catherine. Where are you? Can you unmute yourself? Are you still there, Catherine? Hello. Hello. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, I'm. Hi. Hi, you. Your camera's off, right? I don't see. Right, because I'm not looking too great today, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I. I to spare you. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. Believe me, there are days that, you know that. It's a, I call it the bad hair day, and no matter what you do, you can't get it right. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You guessed it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those are the days that hats come very handy. So, <laughs> well, well, welcome. Thank well, you so much. Well, welcome back. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Connie. Connie, I haven't seen you for a while. I'm tr I, you have to unmute yourself. I can't hear you because you're, you're muted. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I can't hear you. Uh, 
Connie, I can't hear you. I know you're, I can see your face, but I can't hear you because you're muted. So, yeah, you just have to figure out. It's okay. <laughs> it's, uh, well, welcome. So. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. Hi. Yeah, welcome. Hi. Yeah, thank you. But I can't see you. I don't know what I have done. I can only hear you. Okay. But I can see you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see you too. <laughs> yeah, what I was saying to you, um, I was with you three weeks ago, I think. I like to listen to your speech. So. Where do you live? Where do you live? I know you've told me that, and you have to forgive me if I yeah. don't. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm from Denmark. Denmark, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. For the last couple of years, I have been in Mexico in the winter time, but not this year because I can't travel. So. Right. Where? Where in and Mexico? In Ajijic. You know that place? No. No, I don't. No. No. I don't. Yeah, sounds. It's a, a spiritual community up there. Right, Helik. A Helik. A Helik. Yeah, a I'm. I'm thinking that if the borders are open and if God willing, it's possible, and I can to take to take a couple weeks off and go to Mexico during Christmas holiday, if possible, if it happened. So, yeah. so it's interesting you brought Mexico up. So I'm really. Yeah. I, I love so much being there. Yeah. The, the most beautiful beaches and the weather is so good and the people are so nice. Yeah, yeah. So nice. One, wonderful people, very, very sincere yeah. and and uh, beautiful people. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Just simply be easy on yourself and pay attention that you hear complaints are happening here. Something here is complaining. Something here is judging. And don't beat yourself up because if you recognize that you're not your thoughts, the stream of your thoughts, then you become mindful of it. You become aware of the complainer, the one who's complaining. And you just notice it. And you can catch it, that its attention goes on judging people all the time, complaining about a lot of different things. And you start to see that you become aware of it and you disconnect yourself by simply becoming aware and what happens is the more you disconnect which you're in the process of doing it right now it's happening already so for some of you maybe it's quicker or some slower but the fact that you are here on this platform or you are searching you know you're seeking you're checking out different spiritual teachers on youtube or going to different seminars and you're working on yourself the fact that you're doing it know that you're in a process you're evolving now sometimes you may not be happy with your own improvements and uh to yourself you may feel like you're not going forward and you start beating yourself up. But just know that it's a part of the process. It's an ev evolutionary process of human consciousness that it's in a very pivotal point that it's, it's starting to disconnect from the totality of the consciousness of single-pointedness of a me-me thing
think that everything's about me. I'm very important and whatever I get is for me and forget about the rest of the people. And, and I'm just the center of universe and everything evolves around me and my well-being comes first and screw everyone else. And you're in this process of expanding, of recognizing there is a greater part of yourself. So even though if you're struggling with it, just take this to your heart that you are on the right path and don't beat yourself up. When your mind comes, your mind is going to judge you and it's going to be your then it's going to create a feeling of ungratefulness not being grateful to what is what's available here what you have it puts like a blindfold on you on your head and you keep missing you will miss the juice. So, okay, if you're in that process, but just the fact that you're showing up on spiritual path platforms, you know, I don't know, with me, with anyone, maybe you just check out five different teachers during the week and you go to their seminars, which is fine. That means you are doing the work. And you're on the right path. Now it's very, very confusing. It's very good to get focused and stick to one practice that resonates with your heart and keep, keep, keep at it and keep doing the work and not deviate and jump to this and that because that can also be very destructive. And I can't tell you what practice to go take. You have to you have to see where you resonate the most with and just go with it. And as long as it works for you, you you're there till your heart says no. But know that your biggest critic is your own self. It's your mind that's going to be criticizing you and telling you you're not good enough. And you're not worthy enough. You're only going to hear that in your mind. So no one's going to send you an email every week or deliver a postcard to you that you're ugly and you're unworthy and you're stupid. You're the only one who's going to do it to yourself. So you need to awaken to this awareness of observing and being aware of the mind is going to be doing this kind of things. And the fact that the mind is playing these games and the mind is going to drag you into past emotional traumas. Okay? So the mind is going to play games with you. It's been playing games with you from ever since of it. you've been a child and it's going to continue doing it. So it's not really your friend. The monkey mind is not your friend. It's to keep you into the bondage, the illusion of being a slave. And also drags you into your emotional stories of your past, whatever has happened in your life. It drags you into that. So it makes you being a victim of whatever has happened to you. And there is really no victims here. It can't be. Because there is no separation. There is no others for, for you to be a victim because nobody else was there to victimize you. All of it was what aspects of yourself. So we come into this deal in this life and we're born into this and you're going to have to go through your life lessons whatever were written for us as we enter into by the 
creator, Ishvari, whatever story, and you go through the story and the stuff happens through whatever cosmic contracts we have with these other beings that show up in our lives to beat us, to kick us, to cheat us, or whatever. They had to pay their their role and you had to pay your role to learn what you needed to learn. So there is no victim here. They're just players who show up and play their parts. And yes, it appears to be very painful. It's very traumatic. I understand that. But comes to this point of evolving. And in that evolvement, if you want to move on to the next level of expansion of divine love, and freedom, then you have to make a decision to let go of the story. You have to make a decision. You have to look at your past. I'm saying, again, I'm not saying it wasn't traumatizing. I'm not saying that you didn't suffer, okay? I know, but this point, you need to look at it and not superficially say, I'm going to let go of my past and, oh, I'm going to be in present moment. No, I'm not talking about that. Is an inner determination of the commitment to freedom is that the recognition of, for me, to dive into the divine presence and the oneness to the love I cannot drag this garbage bag of my past with me to dive into this pure lake, to this beautiful waterfall. It's a celestial waterfall. The water is falling, this turquoise beautiful lake in front of me. And I want to go shower into it and be blessed by the presence. And you're carrying this toxic, filthy, garbage bag with you. You can't take that. Existence doesn't allow you to take this bag into that waterfall. You have to leave it. At one point, you're going to have to decide on doing that. Say, okay, you know what? I'm going to disconnect from it. Yes, the lessons I've learned, I don't need to make the same mistakes again. But I also don't need to carry this stuff with me any longer. So you know what? I don't need to talk about it. I don't need to bring it up. If my mind goes there, I just switch my mind back to this moment. So you need to become attentive to it. Because you have to do the work. No one else can do it for you. And just be here. And in this shift, in being here, look at what you have now. Okay? What most of you do is you're constantly going to your past and you're bringing your daddy issue, your mommy issue, your abandonment issues. You're constantly going to those stories. And it creates suffering. And so then you're missing out what's here. So you're screwed in two places. You were screwed in your childhood and now you're getting screwed now. So you miss, you miss that and you're missing this. And we don't want to do that anymore. At least I, I'm not going to let my students in the life training program that I have, or if you come to my workshop, if I have you to myself for three, four months, I won't let you go there. I'll just bring you back, no matter what it is, to keep you to re-familiar yourself, to recognize of what is here, of the vastness, of the richness of this moment. And the mind will come and say, because it does, 
because when I, this is what it does, and I'm going to tell you the trick so you understand, because I walk this thing and I fell into these holes, and I don't want that to happen to you. What happens is that when I take about, talk about the vastness of this moment, the beauty of it, the richness of it, what the person thinks that it has to be a party all the time. And if it's not a party all the time, then it's not vastness. Now I'm going to elaborate on that and explain to you what I mean. Is, for example, when we're doing the workshop together, we're in a seminar or we're doing the academy, and we go into the zone. So I bring you here in this moment and I make you disconnect from the story, from your emotional stories or whatever, or your fears of future. You fall into the presence and then bliss takes over because there's no mind. You just go into complete bliss. And when we're working together regularly or we're having a seminar or a retreat or workshop, it magnifies because it's like few hours every day of being into this place. So when the workshop ends, then the next day, after three, four days of being in this place, you go back into your ordinary life, then all the problems come and suffering comes and they creep in. The reason for that is what typical student, spiritual seeker does is they are still looking for the party. They're, they think that, oh, if it's not really strong and it just doesn't blow my mind away and I'm not really just completely in ecstasy, then it's not happening in this moment. But what they're missing is that if you just be quiet and hang out here and not have any expectations of a, a big bang of ecstasy and just go to that period. Now you went really high and now you're, you, it looks like you're going down. But if you just chill out and relax into this moment and not look for anything extravagant, anything like exaggerated, then you will tap into the beauty of the moment. Because it doesn't have spikes. It can have spikes. But you, if you're not looking for spikes to go up and down and up and down, then you find this steady rhythm of bliss continuously in every moment of your life it's steady and that's what we're looking for and that's where we need guidance because we we do a lot of work we go to a lot of different workshops seminars lectures da 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 with known people unknown people whatever but then we keep missing this other part of it of that the present moment, the beauty of the present moment, the vastness of it, the richness of it, is not about having an amazing spiritual experience in every moment of it. That can happen. It's about the simplicity of it. And it's con continuity. That if you tune in, if you can disconnect yourself from the story and your mind and just hang out in here and even accept that it can be boring here and even bring that into the equation that here, yeah, it could be there are moments like nothing's happening. And if I can go beyond that, maybe it's boring. Because I was expecting, Zarathustra says, in this moment, in the vastness, wow, it's really rich. 
I'm not talking about it's rich or vast. That means you're stimulated all the time. It's not about stimulation. It's about this subtle subtlety of it that you're relaxing in here and all of a sudden you're looking around. You're looking in a garden and because you're here and you're not stuck up in this bullshit and you start looking at the plants in your garden and you start checking them out and seeing like there's like family of different plants and they like they have a story going on with them there's a celebration going on then you look down and you see like an army of ants are going from one place to another place and they are carrying food to store it for winter and they have a whole colony of a story going on there which you never noticed it and then you're hearing like there is birds all of a sudden a group of birds they're singing they're talking there's like a seminar going on of these birds and you are noticing that too like before you you too you were too stuck in your head mind fucking all the time of your daily activities life and now all of a sudden you're hearing them just singing and having a symphony and they're talking to another tribe of birds on the other side they're sending messages so you start to all of a sudden with the subtle stuff recognizing like oh my god this is really rich this moment that in traditional way there is no entertainment happening in it but wow I mean there is so much happening around me right now with so many different stuff with the birds with the ants with the plants that all of a sudden you start to recognize how vast and rich the moment is because you're never in this moment you're always somewhere else or you're on your phone or you're trying to get somewhere and you know or whatever is the story and you start to relax into the moment and then as you're relaxing into the moment the moment starts to throw these pearls at you this realization starts to happen this relaxation this starts to take place and this tension that you have in your body your emotional body and physical body there's this tension that you have and a lot of you don't even know there's tension constant tension it starts to just the tension starts to subsidize and just relaxes and the chakra starts to open up and juice starts to to flow the chakra starting to flow because you start your breath starts to get synchronized with the breath of the planet when this moment you start to come to a synchronization and starting the expansion starts to happen and you start to just feel like wow I there's so much love here I love myself and it's so beautiful and you start to dive into the simple moment without any really significant event and if a significant event happens which does happen which is amazing but you're not looking for these big spikes of spiritual oneness or meeting a trans-dimensional being or Christ appears on your 
your life or Buddha or, you know, looking for these big emotional, spiritual, uh, looking for these spiritual experiences all the time, you, so, you start to settle in here. And then you start to appreciate and be grateful. Your perspective starts to change because you start to see so much beauty in the present moment, even in ugliness and diversity of war or famine or whatever is happening, you start to find the life force, the consciousness running through all of it. And you start to detect it and see it, that there is a rhythm in it. And gratitude comes. You become grateful. For whatever number of years you have on this planet, it doesn't matter. Maybe you're here for a day. Maybe you're here for 50 more years. It doesn't matter. The quality of the moment matters, not the duration of it. Because majority of people are dead. A lot of them are alive but dead. You know, you go to these, some of these traditional families or, you know, secular families that they're really stuck into this and that and everything's about, you know, savings for the future and 401k and what's going to happen to the world and everything's about just go to work and make money and make babies and, you know, it's like really it, this stuck way of thousands of years of one dimensionality and then there's no fun. You're sitting at table with your family or friends and everyone's just like, like robots eating there's no fun there's no creativity in the moment there's no availability in this moment because everything is about past and future and it's dead it's very simple my brothers and sisters it's very simple Come and join me on this side. Come, come and enjoy this. Come and enjoy the richness of life with me. Here, right now, in this very moment. Because it's yours. All right, see if we have any. Oh, yeah. Oh, Kim, your daughter just came back from Tulum. I've been thinking about Tulum. I want to go to Tulum. So. Yeah, she was there for three days with her friends. Uh-huh. She just, yeah. So you can, that's really good because it's been on my radar and I've been thinking about it. So I'm kind of waiting to see what, if the border is going to, I was thinking about buying my ticket and book a place, but I'm just waiting to see if it's still going to be open up by then in the next two, three weeks, if it's available to possible to travel. So, but I'm happy to hear that. So let's see. See what I mean, else? I had Go ahead. Seven of us with my friends. We we took a trip to Mountain Shasta. We had a road trip two weeks ago. Okay. Seven. It was incredible life experience. You the second person talk about Mount Shasta in past a uh, couple of weeks. I don't know. Someone else brought it up. Uh, I've never been there, um, so I heard a lot of wonderful. Uh, comments about it but i've never made it there so that sounds good i don't know if i want to go to mount shasta in winter but uh, <laughs> it was cool. we, went to, we went 
snowshoes to walk in the snow because they took us into a vortex and a portal and uh -huh. meditate to go into the the mountain. There's there's a Telos village that is part of the Lumeria consciousness that lives uh -huh. within the mountain, and you go in there. You, you get invited to be in a meditation mode to be invited in there to experience whatever they want us to experience. Yes, Beautiful. wonderful. I'm happy to hear that. I am sure whatever that experience is, it could be discovered in this very moment, in the presence, right here, right now. You are in Lumeria, in this very moment. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> right here, right now, you are in Mount Shasta. <laughs> And you know what the message I got from them before I leave the the village uh -huh. was I was we were given asked to given a gift and uh -huh. my gift was a feather and I asked what is this feather for and immediately it came to me that this feather means be easy on yourself or be soft on yourself and it was so profound I just broke out and cried because I'm pretty tough on myself because I'm a perfectionist. Mm. So it was a lot of thinking event. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I understand. <laughs> That's what I was saying earlier. Just be easy on yourself. Exactly. Yeah, be easy. Be easy in, in, in the way of not beating yourself up. Don't be, don't be easy on yourself when it comes to your commitment to freedom. That do not compromise awareness with anything else. Never, never risk awareness for anything and risk everything for awareness. But yes, be easy on yourself as far as beating yourself up because it's the mind comes and beat yourself up. So you're, you're on the right path, my sister. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anything else? No? Cool, well, I'd like to thank you all uh, for joining me. Uh, we'll have our next academy next Wednesday. Um, my website is zaratustra.tv and uh, that's how you can uh, connect with us if you want to go to uh, come on the website. There is a bunch of uh, vi free videos and meditations available for you. Uh, also, if you want to go to the calendar event to see when is the next academy. Um, so far, we've scheduled the academies all the way till the third week of December. I'm, you know, I'm debating whether we should have our academy the day before Christmas or not. Uh, that's something I haven't decided yet. I'm just gonna feel it to see if we're doing it or not. Uh, I know some people are gonna be traveling and visiting family, so um, let's see. Let's see what's gonna happen. But uh, also, if you have any comments to make and you wanna connect with us, uh, send us an email, info at zaratustra.tv. Uh, I, I will get all your emails and uh, we will respond back to you. Sometimes it's not immediate, it takes a little bit of time, but we'll get back to you. Um, what else I was going to say? I forgot. Lost my train of thoughts. It happens sometimes. Oh, here, we have a comment here. Let's see, yes, I understand. Oh, and it feels like, okay. So, uh, those of you who are on the live training program with me, uh, if you later on can email me of your um, Christmas, New Year holiday uh, plans, if you know you're gonna be available or not, 
I know some of you may waiting for the last minute to make decisions what to do because that's what I'm doing. But uh, if, if if you know of the dates you're not going to be able to get together, just send me uh, your itinerary so I have an idea of how to schedule uh, our uh, how to do the scheduling. I appreciate it. I'm very grateful to have you in my life. I'm very grateful for existence to honor me or find me worthy to be put in this position and get, being given the opportunity of diving into this presence of discovering this magic, something I didn't know all my life was looking for it, and uh, it, it arrived, and it evolves. It's certainly, I'm looking forward to the next phase and how, how it's going to expand because it's always mind-blowing, and it always surprises me of always something else shows up. And it humbles me in a way that, you know, there were moments in my life, in my spiritual development, that I said, I, I got it, I know it, or I thought I figured it out. But it's amazing that it's ever-expanding. And uh, sometimes when I go on YouTube and I listen to other teachers, and I find new things and it's like oh wow that's a great perspective of seeing something and I didn't know that and all of a sudden I learn something new and it opens up my psyche to my awareness to some perspectives that I had no idea or realizations come and it's good to be childlike and not come to any conclusions of I know everything or I've done so much work that I know it all or whatever. I'm really grateful for being on this path and being in this position and now having an opportunity to share my understanding of the absolute and the wisdom that's, that I've come to with all of you. And so thank you for being in my life. I love you very much. And I look forward to seeing you next week. And happy Thanksgiving. Namaste.